Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I am your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they want, need, and desire by helping them implement simple tips and strategies. So now this week we have been talking about healing and why it is essential. If this is your first time coming here after this video, you definitely want to check out the video that I did yesterday, which is why healing is essential in order to find love. Today we're going to talk about how it is that you can heal and we'll talk about it right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So before I get started, for those of you who are finding this video for the very first time, yesterday I actually asked for you guys' help. Today I'm asking for the rest of you guys help who have not sent me in the answers. So what am I referring to? I actually have a survey of different products, different things that I am thinking about working on and I need your help to see which ones you act, which ones you guys actually want to see me work on. So if you want to participate in that survey, please send me an email. You'll see that email down in the description box below at I love me, 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 one, two, three, at gmail.com and just in the subject line type in send me the survey I would absolutely greatly appreciate it for those of you guys who participated yesterday and for those of you who will participate so now today's video how to heal I have eight tips on how it is that you can heal we'll talk about it in a moment the first way that you can go about healing yourself is to stop blaming your ex and get this stop blaming yourself as well there's no reason for it that relationship ended and it's time to move forward it really doesn't matter whose fault it was on why the relationship didn't continue what you have to do and should be doing is working on yourself and figuring it figuring out what you actually did how you participated in making that relationship not work. So it doesn't matter about the blame. The second thing that you can do to heal is to let go of the bitterness that you feel toward him or toward her. And a way to simply do this is to think about all of the positive experiences that you guys share together. You don't have to be bitter that the relationship didn't work out. It just didn't work out. That person, that person was not your forever partner. That's okay. These are all learning experiences. And so in order for you to heal, get rid of that bitterness. The third way to heal is to let go of the expectations, meaning the expectations that you had for the way you expected your ex to behave or the way you expected for them to fight for the relationship and they didn't, or even the way that you thought or expected them to choose you and they did not. Maybe they chose somebody else. Maybe they didn't choose anybody. They just didn't choose you. They just decided to walk away. Had nothing to do with anybody else that they were dealing with. It just didn't work out between you guys. So let go of those expectations. Number four. Number four is a big one for some of us out here. Which is to let down your guard and be willing to open up your heart to the very next person. Or the next person that you deem is worthy of you letting down your guard and opening up your heart to. Don't let the fear hold you back from letting that right person in and experience the most precious relationship that you can experience all because of the past and you not being able to let it go. Or that person ain't gonna get me like because somebody got me before and ain't nobody gonna get me like that no more. You'll never experience a blissful relationship if you keep your heart closed if you keep blaming, if you keep holding on to the past. Really, it's because love can only blossom once you open up your heart. That's the only way love is gonna blossom in your life. Number five, five actually goes hand in hand with number four, which is stop trying to act so tough. <laughs> like you holding on, you don't wanna open up, you don't wanna let down your guard, you wanna keep that brick wall around your heart. And it's because you're trying to be tough for fear 
that somebody else is going to get you at this vulnerable state. And after you have opened up and poured your heart out to them, then they're going to hurt you, whether they use those words against you or whether they decide to walk away because now they don't like the real you or whatever it is. So stop trying to be so tough and act like you don't really care. Start being aloof. You care. Of course you care. All of us care. <laughs> we can act like it only for so long before it starts to backfire on us because sure, it'll save you from being hurt in the beginning, but as the relationship deepens, or at least it should be going toward being deeper and you're holding on and you're holding back and you're not opening up, you, it that's only going to backfire on you and your partner is going to get tired of trying to beg you to open up, to trust them. I'm not the same. They're going to get tired of doing all of that explaining because who really has time for that? <laughs> like you either going to trust me because I'm not your ex. I'm not the last person that you dealt with or even the last 10 people that you dealt with. I am me. And you're not giving me the opportunity or the chance to showcase who I truly am to you. Because you're still comparing me to the other person, the last person, the last two people, the last four people that did you wrong. Go. Number six, let go of that story that you keep telling yourself over and over and over again. You, you're telling it to every single person who crosses your path. You're telling it to the people at the bus stop. You're telling it to all the people on your job. You're telling it to all your friends. You're telling it to all of your family members. And guess what? Everybody's sick and tired of hearing your woe is me story. At some point, you got to take responsibility for the person that you chose to be a part of your life as well as what you did to have the relationship break down just as much as the other person did. It's a two-way street. The relationship never just breaks down because of one person. And maybe you start acting petty because you didn't feel like they were treating you a certain way. Whatever the breakdown was, it takes two people. Could that story that you're repeating over and over again, can you look at it from a different angle? Meaning, what's the lesson in the story versus the what was me part of the story? What did that ex or what did that last partner teach you about you? Did you find out what you didn't like in a partner, what you don't want in a forever partner? Could you actually hone in and think about that, that that could be the lesson versus he or she did me so wrong and I was doing all of this right for him and then it still didn't work out for me? Could you stop with the pity party? Just something to think about. Just another way to look at all of the stories or that one story that you keep telling yourself over and over and over again. And truth be told, because I'm that person, you see your friends and your family and your coworkers, most of the time I'm not going to tell you because they really want you to just get it out. But just notice this. Maybe they stop answering the phone so much when you call because you draining everybody. So I'm going to be the one to tell you to stop with all of that. Stop with all of that woe is me. Stop draining everybody else around you. And think about what the lesson is. Take the lesson. But stop telling yourself that story over and over again. Because it's only hurting you. Because I'm your virtual friend. Who's letting you know that that's not helping you, sis. That's not helping you, bro. It's time to move on. It's time to heal. All right, number seven. This one is for my believers out there, especially, which is to replace that anxiety with faith. Again, stop telling yourself that same story over and over again, because maybe you're blocking the next person from coming to you. And also, going along with faith, it's not your time. It's God's time. Also, worry doesn't come from God anyway. He doesn't want us to worry. He wants you to put all of that stuff in his hands. All of those worries, all of those pains, everything that you can think about that's out of your control. He wants you to give it to him via prayer. 
and move on and let him handle it. But is your faith strong enough to do that? That's the question. Finally, number eight, believe that you deserve love and that you deserve to be loved because it's true. Not because somebody has to, you know, try to tear you down. It's actually true that you deserve love. Despite our abilities, the way we look, what we wear, what we did in our last relationship, what we didn't do in our last relationship, and everything else that you can think of that can be negative and sometimes even positive really doesn't matter. The thing that really does matter is for you to know and understand that you are worthy. You are worthy to be loved you, and you deserve it too. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be respected. You deserve to be honored. You deserve it. But do you believe that you deserve it? Think about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.